I thought in the second verse in particular, you had like this smooth the hustler broken language type of yeah style or flow. Yeah. Is that I referenced that a few times throughout? I mean, I, I mean that's just a staple. After they broke it out, everybody do it. But some people, well, in you know, I like to speak like some type of like a, a lyrical scientist, right? And so when they brought out this type of some type of, I don't want to really label it as free association but it is definitely like a a uh excerpts or scattered thought type of and you just make a statement of it's metaphoric because you say you use the definite article right and then you make a statement of something you don't say it's you you don't you just be like the grave digger, you know what I'm saying? The uh, the the, the pole, you know what I'm saying? And you're just taking a definite article, then you're making a statement of something, and you never even say you're it. You just be saying these things, and everybody get the impression they was the first to do that. Now, a lot of people exploited that stylistically uh, throughout times because they understand the science to where I could just give you all these impressions of who I am without ever saying I'm that. You know what I'm saying? And have you listening to my bars like, oh, you hot. And yeah, I, I do that often because that's something they brought into hip hop and it's going to be here for a while. Shout out to them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Smooth the hustler and trigger the gambler, putting it down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that that being said, when you're uh, the the thing, one thing that I think is interesting about everything we're saying is the value of the art of rhyming, mm -hmm. because I think as rap has evolved i think it's turned into so much other than the art of it it's turned into a hustle it's turned into flipping stuff it's turned into this so for you uh i know it's a simple question on the surface but i think it's much deeper as why is that part the art the creativity that stuff still means so much to you after so long that's a good question that's like asking like a a heavy old heavyweight fighter why he still want to fight for the belt you know what i'm saying because they that's just i bet you we feel the same things but mine's is coming off lyrically and and theirs deteriorates quicker because it's physical you know what i mean like you might look sloppier as a sloppy old boxer than you would a uh, old rapper because you can still mentally be astute and and still get your bars off and so I mean, that's the best analogy I could make. Like the same reason why an old heavyweight feel like he could fight a youngster is because they, I guess, feel like they still got it, right? You know what I'm saying? But I, I don't, just to add, expound on that and I'll close, I look more for people's kind of affirmations towards what I'm doing than my own because no one ever knows when they fell off, right? Have you noticed that? Everybody think they still hot. But the world yes. be like, oh, my God, this dude is over. So I can't really over go on my own confirmations or affirmations. I look into the world, too. And I don't really get no uh, ridicule as far because the, the world is beautifully honest. There's no reason why a person going to come on your YouTube and jerk your strings. Cats be getting called the worst they ever heard. But when I when I examine my social profile just to do that appraisal of myself through other people's eyes, Ain't nobody say I'm falling off or nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I would I would agree with that assessment. Um, yeah, yeah. And that being said, too, uh, with White Crown, you're obviously addressing a lot of heavy topics. And one thing, too, I wanted to get from the comfort level and the ease of what you're saying, stuff like DNA can't prove ethnicity and all these different mm -hmm. heavy things you're addressing in the song. Mm -hmm. So with that, what made you comfortable to say that to where you are putting yourself up for this ridicule that we mm -hmm. now have that we never used to have? Because uh, the, the shocking statements that I'm making are correct and factual. And that's different than the Eminem type of shock. And not saying his aren't correct because his came from a personal place, but he deals with shock value. You see what I'm saying? But to hear somebody say uh, Christianity came from Kemet, lying be or about or whatever I said, you know what I'm saying? That's more to bring attention to 
disprove me and learn a lot of things as you're trying to, you know what I'm saying? You're going to be, because I know the social media age, so somebody already typing and looking, and they probably looking at my profile and they see the magnitude or the depth that we go into with some of these things, and they might see some of the information and see that it is well founded, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and so these are challenging some of the the status quo appear shocking, but then when when that shock reveals something to you that you add into the fibers of your life, you ultimately are thankful. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I think it's it speaks to one of the reasons I fell in love with rap is to be so much you can learn from it. I think unlike other forms of music per se, mm -hmm. but speaking of the people we were talking about earlier in particular, Too Short or Chuck D or Karis One, regardless of what you were listening to, whether it was about women, whether it was about political stuff, whether it was about education or history, you could take and learn stuff from those three artists that are all very different. So for you, what role do you think today, you know, why don't people look at rap, I think, in the same way as we did coming up on the educational or learning perspective? Um, I think it's been over commercialized. Like commerce is a good thing, but us us to become commercial, you know what I'm saying? Like we're we're just making our things to sell it. Yeah, commerce and marketing, all of that is fine. It has its place. But someone made a statement, and I wish I could quote who made the statement. Maybe we I'll Google it and find out. They said when art meets commerce something has to give and it's apparently true because the only thing has given in our regard is the art uh you know all of the standards regarding the art have given way to commerce all of the elementary things that made you a even a you couldn't even call yourself a rapper without a deal remember that was a wannabe now i mean i don't say as bad that it's been democratized but since since commerce had the reason why it was democratized so people could make more money so again here comes commerce again shattering the standards of artistry and, and so that's what i mean by saying it's been over commercialized i don't believe that uh making money off rap is a bad thing i just mean when that's 90 percent of the content is oh make money music then you ain't gonna have no true authentic art form, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. Fair enough. And then White Crown is uh done in collaboration with Dead Perry, who you did the art of reanimation with as well. Mm -hmm. So what what do you think uh, makes you guys a good partnership? Well, it's about the beats that make like I don't like writing, right? So if you send me a beat I gotta write to, you effectively gave me some homework. You know what I'm saying? And so if his beats is making my rhymes pop up quick, then I, I work with the formula until my creativity tell me that you ain't writing to these beats no more because you can't think of nothing. So he sent me beats and, oh, wow, I got raps. And it's been uh, some chemistry that's just been working. Okay. And then with White Crown in particular, the ruler's back from Slick Rick is sampled on there. Did that? Did he give you the beat that way, or did you guys add that later? Oh, well, you know, we got my man uh, scratch that in. You know what I'm saying? Because he said, try challenging my crown, man. That's really rather silly. And so we went to DJ Eclipse. To, you know how DJs do. They'll find that appropriate cut that match right up with uh, the theme of the song. And I think he did a wonderful job for bringing that out. You know, I agree wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. So that being said, also with the Art of Reanimation, uh, your collaboration album with Dead Perry, one thing on there, like Shut Shit Down and a couple of the songs you were talking about, like you, growing up, but you were talking about you couldn't join gangs, you were colorblind, how you were fat, <laughs> you couldn't dance, and how people used to laugh at you back in the day. Mm -hmm. So for you... Uh, what made you want to explore that part of your life, those parts of your background? Oh, when I heard that beat, just it happened the same way. So just like that beginning of that beat, I would never rap like that, you know, but it was sounding spoken wordy to me. And the idea that popped in my head was spoken wordy. So I was able to produce that content in about five minutes for the beginning. Oh, uh, he heard a blast and he started because it just was coming to me. And so when the beat switched up, the, the narrative switched up, 
And the rhymes that came to me kind of like was narrative of my younger life. But but I was kind of feeling on that day, whatever bag Bizarre be in, the rapper, <laughs> I was in that bag. You know, it was not really all the way comical, but what's that type of comedy called? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Satirical, but but not all the way going to crack you up. It just be like... <laughs> He's cracking some weird jokes. And that's what I was kind of like on in that song. Even talking about, I once cut a uh, 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 dope fiend fingers off for smoking my roaches. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, whatever. You know, it's just like being ill, I guess we used to call it. But it was more comically ill. Yeah. And another recent project was the Big Head Science with the Gift of Science. Mm -hmm. And uh, moving into a lot of this religious commentary and different things so uh for you as you're getting into these different topics i know you're writing differently but philosophically and as you listen back to your music compared to say something back in the day that you did how do you view what you're doing differently like forget the fans for a second when you're uh, yeah when, when you're so, it's not so easy but the only thing that allows me to do it real good is to forget when I forget what I said on the song. And I could hear, like, you know what I'm saying? If I forgot what I said, then sometimes I could be like, oh, okay, this got to be around 2000 or something because I can start analyzing and hearing the styles and compare it to other periods in my career. But if, if it's still familiar in my head, you still got the curse of being the one who created it and not being able to be a fair judge of things you created. But in comparison, when I listen to the newer rapper, I think I'm better, yo. I always be like, man, he'll gas him. Like, I'll go grab one of my verses and listen to a newer one and be like, yeah, he clearly, whether or not you like some of the styles or rhyme schemes, you would have to say that some of the depth of the uh, word association and the wordplay has gotten a little bit deeper than it was when, when I was an elementary rapper. But that's my assessment of myself. Well, break it down. Like, give me a specific example, old and new. So yeah. I wouldn't even, even, um, all right, well, Something I said, so, so, all right, I'm going to try to break it down. So when I was younger, I would be stuck on, so let's think about Big Pun, packing the Mac in the back of the act, right? Now, notice here that rappers, this is something I figured out. There are certain phone memes or certain small sections of words that make hip-hop audience react different than other phone memes. Uh, and particularly the act sound, rappers love it. I mean, the audience love it and everything, right? And so earlier, I knew that as a artist, like you could just think, of, go listen to some hip hop and when cats be like, start getting into that. I, I, it's all kind of different ones too. Opio had one that was a a, 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 a sternly pronounced ER. So he'll be make her quiver, then I shiver. You know what I'm saying? And so some these, Again, these little phone memes or whatever, they get different reactions from people. And when I pointed out pack, uh, packing the Mac in the back of the act, that got a reaction from us, too, because he, because it rhymed, it was swift, it was clever, and plus he was hitting those phone memes that make hip hoppers respond. Now, I started understanding that earlier, and you can see me giving examples of it, but now that I've grown with it, I'm not just giving you the phone memes, I will give you the sounds and then put a well carved together thought inside of it. So packing the Mac in the back of the act is funny and it's a real thing, but that ain't deep. You see what I mean? But in the same regard, I said something like, I said, I'm like the king of Axum Axon. Bring the Maxims of Patal back to action. I actually swing my axe a Y axis. 33 degrees west on the Y axis. I was still doing the act and the act and the act too, right? So I know the hip hop rapper dudes is getting duped into it who because I know how to ooh bedazzle you. This is this is the art of limericks and lyrics, and but some people don't go this deep, right? But what I did and now that I'm more mature was actually gave you some history that if you wanted to go in and look at any of this shit, it lined all the way up perfectly. Well, we say the king of Axum is a African king during the Christian era. 
But I said, I was like the king of Axum, Axum, bring the maxims of Ptah back to action. The maxim of Ptah is the first ancient Egyptian book ever written in history. Anyone can Google maxims of Ptah. And so just to illustrate, now I'm still doing the pack in the back in the back, but no, nah, it's saying something that can actually, and then I have this challenge amongst myself. I'm no longer battling rappers. I'm trying to battle the songs of Solomon, all of these anti pearl songs that lasted throughout the ages. And I'm feeling I'm getting to the point to where somebody from ancient times could have found this scroll right here called the white crown and would have been like, he's saying something real. You know what I'm saying? And so, and that that's like, I want to battle Socrates and, you know, ancient poets or what have you. So that's, I don't know. Well, by comparison, I guess that's a little different from I didn't mean to intervene through. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, and that shout out to Too Short, who was probably the inspiration for uh, that type of swag. But we grow, we learn. And um, I'm glad I was allowed to show change in my life. You know, people would never imagine I got shot at 25 or something like Pac or something. So we never know with some of these young, I mean, cats throwing their lives away right now, but. I'm just glad I got to be 47 and learn myself this way. Well, congratulations. It's a beautiful thing. I want you to listen real close to me. I'm gonna ask you some real simple questions and I want some real simple answers. Do you understand? Yeah. Do you understand? Yes, I, I understand. You said that you couldn't have possibly been at the crime scene at 11.15 because you went to bookstore buying my audio book and my hardcover book at 11.15 when the crime scene occurred in Soren's book. The history of gangster rap. So you couldn't have been at the crime scene because you were buying the books. Right, right. At 11.15, I was, I was at the bookstore at, at 11.15 and when, when I, bought, I bought the books and accidentally left them at the store. So at 11.15, you couldn't have been at the crime scene because you were buying books, right? At, at 11.15, I was, we, we was, when I was leaving, it was, it was some people coming in, and I, I, I forgot to grab But you, you, you don't remember who what they looked people, like. What would they look like or nothing, right? No. Hmm. So. Twelve fifteen. You went to bookstore buying my audio book and hardcover book and Soren's book at twelve fifteen. So you couldn't have been at the scene because you were buying the books, right? Yeah, at twelve exactly at twelve at twelve fifteen exactly. I was at the bookstore. <laughs> You know you know fucked up. Which which one? First you said you were at the bookstore at eleven fifteen, and then you said you were twelve fifteen. You know you know fucked up. He fucked up. Yeah, he fucked up. He fucked up. Man, you you confusing me, man. So you get my book, my audio book. 40 years in Soren's book, History of Gangster Rap, and if you don't, you know you're not fucked up, right? Man, the more those cops ask me questions, the more I wish I bought them motherfucking books. <laughs>